Hello and welcome. So this is the first course in a series of lectures that will talk about how you can actually implement numerical, al numerical algorithms to solve continuous optimization problems in practice. So the first algorithm that we'll talk about, and this is the base of the algorithms that we'll be looking at further, is gradient descent. So we'll start by giving some motivation about what is gradient descent and, and how it is derived. Then we'll talk about the actual algorithm. And after that, we'll, we'll say something about its performance. Yeah, now we can probably improve. So first of all, the problem statement. So what we'll be looking at first, it's how we solve an unconstrained optimization problem. So this is, we have some scalar function f, which is a function of uh, some vector variable x. Yeah, which belongs to an x in this case. So the idea and how we want to visualize this is that we have some bowl shaped function like this one over here. Um, and then you have some starting point and that you will have some iterative procedure such that we start here and we progressively by taking some steps make our way to some optimal point. Yeah, so this and this, they're both the same plot. Only one is plotted in 3D and the other one only in 2D. All right, so first of all, what we will be looking for is for places where our gradient is zero. Yeah, and this is because places where our gradient is zero will give us a local minimum. Now, there's two other points that can actually also give us gradient equal to zero. One of them is, is a maximum. And if we're minimizing, we definitely don't want to go into a maximum. But the general idea is that all our methods will go downhill. Yeah, and as long as we're going downhill, uh, by definition, it's not possible to get into a maximum. Yeah, so when our gradient is zero, we won't, we, we know that we at least won't have reached a maximum. Now, other things that we can, we can get to is inflection points, yeah, or saddle points. And these are where the curvature changes in our function from positive to, uh, to negative. And this also have gradient equal to zero. And the basic idea is that most algorithms, for example, use something called a line search, and this avoids it. And the general intuition is that if, when we look for a, when we do a step in the direction um, that we want to go, unless we hit exactly the point where our curvature changes and it's equal to zero, in general, we will simply overlook it and pass through it. Yeah. Again, this is assuming we're doing something, for example, that's called a line search, which I won't go a lot into it. But the general idea is that we, we, we won't encounter this a lot. And when we actually find something, uh, a place where a gradient is equal to zero, this will be a minimum. Yeah. Again, and this is because we won't, we're not able to find a maximum because we're always going downhill. And in general, we won't encounter places. We won't hit exactly where our curvature changes, so we will just jump over this um, this point if it's an inflection point. So now we'll go about the first algorithm, which again is called gradient descent, and this is what we'll be discussing in this mini tutorial. So the idea is again we have this problem statement, and like I mentioned, what will happen is that, or the general scheme that we'll be doing is that our algorithms will have an iterative scheme where we start at this point and we take steps, yeah, all the way to the optimum. And the steps take the form of a step size and a direction, yeah? And I'll talk a bit more about them in a bit, but basically this is my gradient, yeah? If, you, if you've forgotten a bit or a bit rusty on calculus, if you remember the gradient is nothing but the vector of, the column vector of first derivatives, so the derivative of my function with respect to my first, uh, let's say, dimension, uh, then and so on all the way to, to my last dimension. Yeah. And again, going a bit more about it. So if this is my function, so this is a quadratic function, which I want to minimize a function of x1 and x2. So first I take the derivative of this function with respect to x1. This term goes away and I'm only left with the derivative of this term. And this is the term here. Then for the second bit, uh, I have to get the derivative of this whole expression with respect to x2. This term doesn't depend on x2, so it goes away. And I just get the derivative of this term, and that's it, this one over here. Yeah, so this is just, again, to remind you a bit of, of what a gradient is, because we'll be using it a lot. 
And so why, what are we doing this? So the idea is that at any point, so we are at any point in our function, this is our point xk, and to get our new value, to get our new xk plus one, we're gonna take both a step size and a direction. Yeah, so, so if I wanna move some one, from one point to another, I'm always looking for a direction and also a step size. And the idea is that the step size will be something like e to the minus three, e to the minus four, so a small value. We won't focus a lot about this, but the general idea is that we want some small value. Again, let's say just, just e to the minus three to e to the minus five. And then the gradient will actually give us the direction. So although, of course, the gradient also has a component uh, of, of step size, we will in general just think about the gradient as a direction. And so the idea is why are we using the gradient? Well, actually, if you remember from calculus, the gradient is the direction of maximum increase of a function. Yeah. So if we're starting at, at if we if we are standing at xk, then our function increases most rapidly in the direction gradient of xk. Yeah. And if you see, we actually have a minus sign here. So what we'll be doing is the direction that we'll be going to is the direction of the maximum decrease of our function. Yeah, and we'll take a small step size alpha in that direction. And so this is kind of intuitive, right? So if I want to minimize a function and I am currently standing at a point xk, probably the, the correct thing to do would be, okay, I'm gonna look at where my function decreases most rapidly and then take a step in that direction. Yeah, and that, that's basically gradient descent. Um, so the algorithm that, that, that you would do would be something like this. So you would start at some point x0. Yeah, you can think of it at, at this point or this point over here. And then until your the norm of your gradient is very small. So E is some tolerance that needs to be close to zero because again, we're looking for places where our gradients are almost zero. Then we're gonna take, we're, we're standing in our xk and we're gonna take some direction, again, predefined direction alpha, which is a small number, and then we compute the gradient and we take a step size in that direction. Yeah, on, on the direction of the negative of the gradient again. And then we get our new point and we do this iteratively until, again, we meet this tolerance, yeah? And I think the first non-intuitive thing that you learn in optimization is that this is a terrible method. Yeah, again, it's probably very logical for someone who's, who just started looking at it. And at least it was a surprise for me when they told me this, but the idea is that this method does not work. Probably um, a bit of a tip on this is that in computer science, this is known as a greedy algorithm because it does the best thing that it can right now without really looking into the long-term future. And that might be a first sign that this is not the best method. But again, this is just for, for general context. So the idea is that it has terrible performance. And so for example, just to illustrate something, so for this function here, which again, the, the exact mathematical expression is not important, but the idea is that gradient descent does something like 60,000 steps to get from the starting point all the way to the optimum. And just to get a bit of context, so methods that we might be seeing later on and that are actually, that are actually probably based initially on gradient descent, they take somewhere between four and 16 steps uh, to get all the way to the optimum. Yeah, so 60,000 is, is by far an overkill. All right, so why is this? So the idea is that gradient descent, once we get near our optimal, like in this case, it starts oscillating, yeah? So here I'm, I'm actually putting a function, a, a quadratic function, which is x1 squared, plus five times x2 squared, yeah? And the idea is that gradient descent, once it gets close to the optimum, it actually starts oscillating, yeah? And not only that, but actually if we zoom in here, yeah, and we expand this, we see that we're actually oscillating still. And if you notice the axis here are actually very small. So this rectangle should actually be much smaller, but just, you know, for presentation, I put it a bit large. But then not only that, but actually if here I still zoom into another rectangle, I'll see another image very similar to that one once again. Yeah. So what's the problem? That actually steepest descent oscillates a lot. And this is mainly happening 
in this function at least, or, or this happens in general, but, but I'm, I'm showing it in this function, because of this 5 here. So what's happening here is that my f function, so my objective function, changes much more rapidly with x2 than with x1, right? So it changes 25 times more rapidly with x2, right? So if I change x1, x2 by, by, by a unit of 1, this is going to represent basically a 25 increase in my function. If I change x1 by a unit of 1, this is going to basically increase this by 1. Yeah. So again, this means that my function is varying much more rapidly with x2 than with x1. Yeah. And you can see actually in this, in the contour plots, yeah, in this contour plot, you can see that actually, yeah, you can see the, the, the curvature of the ellipsoids, right? That it varies much more rapidly in one direction than the other. And this is actually what's making steep F descent have a very bad performance. So for example, if here instead of, of 25, of 5, which becomes 25, we put a value of 1, then we see that our algorithm stops oscillating and we actually reach the maximum uh, much faster. Yeah, And this is what we call scaling. Yeah, so it means that, that the scale, so this is a problem that, that the, correct, the scale is correctly. And, and we actually can go into lots of details about this. Yeah, uh, but, the, but here is just to get the general idea that a function that varies much more in one direction than in other, we can say that it's ill-conditioned or that it, has, that it has a lot of scaling or it's badly scaled. Yeah. And so the idea is that when we remove that scaling, basically, then this algorithm just becomes much more faster. And then one question to, to say is, okay, then when you give me an optimization problem, all that I need to do is I need to scale it uh, such that it works very well. And actually we do that a lot, for example, in chemical engineering, right? So, so sometimes we try to scale our problems, we try to dimensionalize them. But the main idea is that this is not a solution. So in most engineering problems, even if you try to rescale your variables and have, have everything nice and neat, you will still have like widely variating uh, function with respect to, to, to some variables. And again, here we had a factor of 1 to 25. These are only two variables, but then when you have many more variables, you know, hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands, you can get much higher uh, variations between fast varying variables and, and slow varying variables. And, and again, this makes gradient descent have terrible performance. And this, this is a whole field of study. But again, this is just to get the general idea on it. All right. So... The main idea about gradient descent is that it takes the steps in the direction of negative of the gradient, again, because this is the direction of the maximum decrease of the function locally. This is a first order method because it only uses gradients. Yeah. So second order methods are those that use matrices or Hessians, and zero order methods are those that don't use derivatives. Now, this method is heavily affected by scaling or ill-conditioned functions, so this is just what I talked about about a function varying a lot in one direction and not a lot in another. And the idea is that the error decreases linearly. Yeah, so the error with respect to my point and the optimum point, it decreases linearly. So for example, let's say that my error at the current iteration is epsilon k, then my error at my next, the next iteration is going to be epsilon k times 0.9. And the idea is that if my error is large, then at the beginning I'm going to make fast progress, right? Because, I mean, a large number times a constant tells me that I'm going to be making good progress, so I'm going to decrease my function. But once epsilon k is quite small, I'm just going to say maybe 1 e to the minus 3, then you're going to be making very, very small progress, right? Because at every step, you're only going to make, be making some fraction of the progress of your current error. Uh, so the idea is that this is what's called linear convergence, and gradient descent algorithms uh, reduce the error linearly. Yeah, the error decreases linearly. And this means that it's terrible for high precision. So most commercial solvers probably go to anywhere between e to the minus 8 to e to the minus 16, a bit less than e to the minus 16, but let's say to e to the minus 8. So getting to those tolerances is practically impossible for gradient descent because, again, at the end you need to do many, 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 many small steps. Yeah, And this makes it that it's really not used in practice. So 
gradient descent is used sometimes in machine learning because many times what they do there is that they start very high, very high up and they do uh, some gradient descent steps and at the beginning again you decrease very rapidly but if you want to really reach an optimum this, this is not used in practice at all and in engineering or in physics application it is just not used and in subsequent lectures we're going to see actually other algorithms that might be inspired uh, or could be a second attempt thought of as a second attempt after gradient descent and that uh, work quite well in practice